to uh, another edition of Lab Rats, your favorite internet podcast. No, really, it is. And I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Sean doesn't like it when I like tell you that we're your favorites. He feels embarrassed. You know, I'm, I'm kind of Canadian. He is kind of Canadian that way. Oh, well. If you like us, it would be really great. Thanks a lot, man. Hey. All right, today on the show, uh, we're going to be looking at a new, well, actually, it's not necessarily it's a new not new. software, but it's very, is it new? No, no, no. no. It's uh, been out for a little bit. Something called Parallels. Uh, if you've been looking at a Mac that runs Intel chips these days, you may think, hmm, maybe I can run Windows on that as well as a Mac OS. Yes. And you can do it with Parallels. You can do it with Parallels. All right, well, we'll have more on that when we come back. <laughs> This is a llama. It carries luggage. This is a burrito. It is lunch. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It makes screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencasting tool is not woolly or made of beans? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. You know, there's a lot writing on today's episode, and I'll tell you why. Because, you know, you, you guys know that I'm not a big fan of the Mac. I've got to say, though, that they make great hardware. And if this goes off well today, if Sean pulls this off, I might actually buy a Mac laptop and install Windows Vista on it. Mm -hmm. So let's well, see. Good. Um, I should uh, point out, Parallel's uh, desktop is not strictly a product for Macintosh. It actually uh, has been working on Windows for a while now. So there's the concept of sandboxing where you take an operating system and run it within another operating system. So XP on XP or 98 on XP, ah. that sort of thing, so that you can test your Why code. Why would you run XP on XP? Um, well, let's just say you're doing some testing of um, some software, or you don't want to get uh, your system infected. You want to try something out to see if it works. Mm -hmm. So you'll put the operating system in virtualization mode, in a sandbox, basically, ah, right. so you can run it in oh, a so, virtual mode. So you could actually like infect a Windows XP machine in right. a sandbox, watch what happens, and then kind of record right. it and deal with it. And it won't in a safe infect it. And it won't infect the machine that's running that oh, emulation. Yeah. Kind of cool. So how it does is it runs virtual machines. Okay. Uh, and a virtual machine machine is essentially a large file that represents a hard disk. Mm. It's one file, and it mounts it as if it was another machine, and then it runs it within this space. Mm. So uh, it runs it within a separate memory space on your computer and keeps everything separate. So the this reminds me yeah. of. You know when we go to Las Vegas every year to the Consumer Electronics Show, mm -hmm. right? We go to the Consumer Electronics Show, and uh, you know we check out Vegas. And there's a hotel called New York, New York, which is a mm -hmm. mini New York in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. It's taking something and running inside something else. Kind of. It'd be kind of like running Las Vegas within Las Vegas. Vegas so what they Vegas, need is a, a, hotel a Las Vegas. Vegas themed hotel. Right, in Las Vegas. Yeah, and I mean the the nice thing about this is when you go to New York, New York in in Las Vegas, yes. it's not exactly New York. Right. It's sort of a representation of it, and it, you know, some of the things aren't exactly the same. This will actually run a full-fledged version of the operating system within your machine, which is nice. So cool. you can simulate it. Um, now, Parallel's desktop on the Mac, one of the nice things about uh, the fact that the Macs recently made a switch over to Intel chips is they can actually run the software now and run it at full speed. Mm. Now, users of the Mac for a while may remember something called Virtual PC, which right. Windows did. Uh, it was a pig of a program. It didn't run very well. You could run Windows on the Mac, but you couldn't run it wasn't there. and do anything real on mm. it. Okay. It was novelty. Okay. So, uh, but Parallels, it uses the, the fact that it has an Intel uh, chip inside these machines now to actually rev it up to full speed. Fabulous. And so you can actually run it. Now, we should mention as well um, that there's two ways to run Windows on your Mac. There's Parallels, which runs it within a window on your Mac. So you're just running Mac, and then all of a sudden you say, I think I'll run Windows now. So you'll fire it up, and it'll still be there, but Mac will still be running in the background. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which and is going to be a big memory hit. It's a big memory hit. If yeah. you're going to do this, you want to crank your memory up to about two gigabytes, I think, at least, to make okay. this run. So you have one gigabyte for Windows, one gigabyte for Mac. Right. Uh, if you don't do that, then it'll just run very badly on both operating systems, so it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other way you can do it um, is something called Boot Camp. And Boot Camp is something that Apple released, and it's going to become part of Leopard um, um, as a basic part of the operating system for free. 
when Leopard releases, it will be about $30, I think, to add this on to wow. other versions. So Leopard's a new version of Windows, right. uh, sort of Mac OS. Type. Mac OS, yeah, that's right. the next version. The current one is Tiger. And right now, you can get Boot Camp as a beta, right. but it'll cost about $30 after Leopard releases right. to do that. But what it does is it sets up a sec separate partition on your hard drive. Right carves out the space and allows you to run it natively on that. So it's not running in virtual machine mode. It's actually running it you know, as an actual operating system on Very the machine. Cool. Right. And that's not what we're talking about now. That'll mm -hmm. actually run faster. It'll run uh, more like Windows. Uh, when you're running in a virtual machine mode, it sort of cuts down a few of the resources that you have. Um, but it's nice because you can switch between operating systems like that. You don't have to reboot the machine to do it. Okay. So, so it's hot, hot swapping, is it? It's kind of hot swapping. Sort of. So between windows, so we're going to fire it up here. Um, we've got uh, Win Vista here uh, is my virtual version of Windows Vista. Okay. Here, so we've been talking about Vista a lot later, er, lately. So I'm going to power on the virtual machine. Push the play button. I'm going to push the play button to get it going. And so you can see it's booting up just like a so regular. So you've actually just booted the machine. I've right? just booted the machine okay, cool. now. The nice thing about this is uh, with the virtual machines is they boot a lot more quickly than usual. Um, this actually takes a little bit longer than it would, but I mean, you see, it's it's actually booting up. Now, so, now the copy of Vista inside that thinks that it really is sitting on an actual machine that that doesn't doesn't know yeah. the parallels there is all, at all. Yeah, it doesn't care where it is. It thinks it's just running on a machine with really meager resources. Right. So the graphics card is uh, is not so great. Um, it's running. Uh, Will it run the new Aero interface? It won't run the new no. Arrow interface. Right. No, okay, so it's running in, in uh, Vista Basic mode then. Right. So we, we thought maybe because the graphics card component uh, on this one it's running an integrated graphics. So on the MacBook it definitely won't. Um, it will on the MacBook Pro if you're running in boot camp mode. But um, I've heard that you can't actually run it uh, Arrow on MacBook in emulated mode. All right. So um, I may be wrong about that, but that's what I've heard okay. at this point. So we are about ready to get this going now. So it's, I mean, it's a, a longer boot up process than Parallels you'd like. Fun. Parallels now the nice thing fun. about uh, Windows XP is this boots almost instantly. With Vista, it takes quite a while. Right. So that tells you a little bit about Vista's uh, bloat. Yes. Over it's, XP. It's a little bloaty. So here we go. Now it's uh, starting up now. Finally. Oh, wow. Do, do, the exper do, 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 entire ex experience is going to be like this. Nope. Once it's actually up and running, it's, it's pretty good. So now we've got this going. I'm going to enter my password in here. And away we Chocolate go. Chocolate underwear? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, you got to choose something that you'll remember. OK, right. so here we go. Now we have Vista running. Wow, is that ever fun? Right, and it's actually running in a slightly uh, higher resolution than my desktop can provide right now. So you can change that, but you've got access to the start menu down here. And, and you're essentially running Vista now on this machine. Now you're also running a screen recorder here, right? So that's I'm running a screen recorder. Recording and that's, all this as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the nice things about this. If you're trying to capture Vista, for example, I mean, let's, let's, let's try this just as a, an experiment, because we've been having some problems recently with, uh, with um, capturing the UAC settings. Yes. Let's see if we can do that here. OK, so date and time. It's going, so we're going to change the we date have, and like, time. We have 27 people here today like watching the show. Yeah, trying and they're, to make them laugh. they're all they're like, on the edge of their seat, too, watching this. OK, so there we go. We've got the user account control. I keep calling user access control. But it's uh, it used to be called, control. I don't think that's early, early days. What? What? We love you, Andy. That's John. Peanut gallery. Yeah, thanks. All right. We're getting the uh, the devil horns as well from UAC. Snowball. OK, so we're going to hit continue. So we'll see if this pops up when we uh, finish the final screen capture. But it's, it's you know, doing this whole, this whole thing in virtualization mode. And my Mac can see it, so I'm assuming you'll be able to grab it. So, right. so okay. we're done with that. So I'm, I'm actually going to shut this down. And we're going to take you through the installation of uh, an operating system Ooh. on this Fine. and just show you just what you need to do. Now, we're, we're talking about Windows Vista, and we're talking about Windows XP, but that's not all uh, you can run on this. It Could actually, I run all 27 versions of Vista on this? Like, how many, how many particular incidences can I run of the different OSs? You can run as many of them as you want, I so believe. So I can install, like, a Vista Starter, Vista uh, Home Basic, Vista Home, sure. Home Premium, sure. Ultimate Business. Now, the problem with uh, running any of these operating systems on your ma machine here in virtualization mode is you need to create a hard drive file on the machine. OK. And uh, you need to create it 
you know, it, it puts everything on there. So if you've got nine gigabytes of uh, Windows Vista install, it's going to take up nine gigabytes of your hard drive. I see, yeah, yeah. And then if you want space for it to expand and do other things, it's going to take up even more. So, so it's can, basically a big, great big fat hard drive hog. It can be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you need a, a fairly big hard drive. And I showed you how to install a new hard drive in the MacBook a number of episodes back. Yes, you were very good at that, um, by the way. Yeah, that was a good episode. It's, it's very quick um, very to good. do that it's as well. Pretty, pretty smart. So you really want to, if you're not going to do this on a 60 gigabyte hard drive, probably, if uh, you want to do this, because you know, if you're installing Vista on it, that's nine gigabytes gone. Right. Um, so get a bigger hard drive if you buy it initially, or install a newer, bigger one right. later on. One terabyte. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into install a new OS from the file menu. Um, I was going to say, it's not just Windows that you can install on this. You can install almost anything that will run on the 386 chipset. So we've got Linux on there. Um, so it'll guide you through the process. So we're going to hit Next. We're going to go. Ubuntu is fun. OK. Cool. So. So here we go. We've got Express Windows OS installation recommended. Yes. Uh, so if you're just installing Windows, uh, XP or Vista, just go with that. It'll, it'll step you through the process fairly automatically. My mom could do this. She could almost, yeah. Um, what would my mom have to pay for this? Um, it depends on whether you're doing this for Windows. And, and you can run this on Windows as well. Yes. And that one's, I think, about $50 US. This on the Mac is about $80 hmm. uh, to run it. Um, there's uh, other versions that are coming out that will actually allow you to run both Windows and, Vis or Windows and Mac control panels at the same time on the Mac. That's still in beta as we're recording this. This but is my question. Might be out. Can you install the Mac OS on a Windows machine? No, you can't. You can't because... Uh, Mac OS is not licensed to be used on other hardware besides Apple hardware. So you can crack it, I guess, get the cracked version if you really want to do that and do it that way. Let's do that one time. Um, yeah, let's not do it on camera because then we get sued. So if you really, really want to do it, you probably can. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's not technically allowed. So, so Parallels doesn't say, no, you can't do this. This is contravening Steve Jobs' favorite hobby know, of suing people. I, I don't know exactly how that works. but. You know, I think you'd have to sort of do a little bit of a hack here because it says when, when you're doing a custom installation to, to set up the type of operating system you're going to put on here, you notice Apple isn't in here. There's other. So you might be able to hack it together yourself. But you'll see here, you've got Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, OS2. So if you really want to run Warp Woo. again, you can. Solaris, MS-DOS. OS2 Warp. Wow. And other. And then, this is, since we've done Windows already, well, let's, let's check this. So, guest OS version. So, here's the versions you can run. 3.11, 95, 98, ME, NT. So, you can basically run all of them. It says other Windows. So, if there are other Windows that come out, you can uh -huh. do that. Wow. You can hack your own. And all the 67 versions of Windows Vista. Right. Linux, again, you have all of these different versions. Red Hat, Linux, Debian, Fedora, SUSE, Mandriva, Zandros, and more generic uh, kernel 2.4 and 2.6. So, if you know what the kernel is, but it's not listed here, you can hack it as well. And I've, I've chosen other Linux. This is a Geek Playground. It is. And, and I've actually got... Uh, 50 bucks of fabulous joy. I've this actually got uh, Kubuntu running on this. I've got Vista running on this machine. I've got XP running on this machine. I just flip back and forth between them. It takes up about 50 gigs on my hard drive. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely worth it. You have no life, do you? I don't. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to... Well, let's, let's go back to, uh, to Vista and, and get it started, and you'll see the process. Uh, one other thing I wanted to, to show you here, uh, custom OS installation. Okay, so we're going to do it this way because we have a little bit of a tweak here. So um, you can actually run this from an image file, an ISO file as well, if you don't actually have the oh, yeah. hardware here. Oh, cool. So we've got uh, Windows Vista Ultimate. We can install from that. We're going to install from Windows. We're going to install Windows Vista here. And this is a little bit flaky, I found, but hopefully it'll be uh, fixed up. Okay, so, so you've in, chosen the type of uh, operating system and the version of the operating system. Mm -hmm. You want to specify, specify how much RAM is going to be dedicated to oh, it. Oh, is it so, right? So, so you've got two gigs right. on here. You could, right. like, say, a gig. or You can say a gig. You can say more. So I, I'd say if you're doing this, just set it to one gigabyte. So, so split it evenly so Mac OS still has enough to run. So let's go with 1024. Oops, that'll be good. Hit Next. Parallels is fun. Okay, Parallels you, is nice. You want to create a new virtual hard disk. Bucks. It's going to cost you. Specify the size. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> have, you, have you ever thought about going into pop music? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Come so, on. so you have to specify the hard disk size. So you want to make sure you don't underestimate this because if you do underestimate it, you won't be able to fit the operating right, system onto it, or you can fit it barely. You'll squeak it and yeah. then have no See, room to install. See, for me, I just like, like click, click, click. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah click, 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 click. Yeah. Whatever. So you don't want to do this. So um, in this case, we're running Vista, so I want at least 16 gigs on here, mm -hmm. so that I have room for the 
uh, 15 gigs of operating system. Yes. And a couple of uh, free files that I'm going to put on here. Right. And I, I've chosen expanding on there, so it'll, it'll accordion out theoretically as it needs more. Right. Just click next to this one because it's just uh, creating a hard disk file and naming it automatically. And does not exist. Let's go yes. Uh, it exceeds the free space available on the target eh. disk. Eh. Yeah, so that's not going to work. Right. So let's, let's go back. Well, should we take a uh, break? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's have a look at this uh, message from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencasting product is not woolly or made of beans. Is it A, a llama, B, a burrito, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is... Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. So, so this is a pretty involved process. I mean, this yeah. is going to take you an entire Saturday to do. No, it's not going to take you that long. It does take you a, a number of steps to go through there and set up the virtual machine. Uh, as soon as you uh, get it set up, you'll hit start the very first time, and you'll put your operating system disk in there and it'll automatically start booting it up and installing it in there. One thing I did want to tell you about, which I mentioned earlier, is the fact that you can boot from an ISO file. And uh, when, you have, when you're done the setup process initially, it'll give you a screen like this mm -hmm. that just is your control panel. You can change things uh, on the fly here. Um, you can edit them by hitting the edit button at the bottom, or you can just click on them here. So I'm going to click on this. It'll bring us to a configuration page, straight to the CD, DVD, ROM options, and right here you see it says use image file. Oh, right, so you can install it from right, an so, ISO file. That's cool. And that I've, I've got that when I, uh, on my desktop here. Testing Vista for sure. Right, so I've, there's my uh, Vista desktop, and we'll hit open, and now that is where it will theoretically boot from. Mm. Like I said, it's a little bit flaky. You sometimes yeah. have to really cajole it to make it work, right. but uh, just keep at it, and you'll get it to go. 50 bucks of operating system fun. Entire Saturday? You can skip church on Sunday and say, oh, I've got to install Parallels. Sure. <laughs> if you really want to, don't skip church because of this stuff. All right. Uh, let's have a look at some pictures. Yes, sir. See who's out there. So we have Travis. He uh, wrote in after our uh, Linux episode. And uh, it's a little bit dark back here, but you can see on the screen, uh, he's got like a bunch of machines here. He's got Linux boxes, and he's got Windows. So he, he Travis would like Parallels. He plays friendly with a bunch of different operating 50 systems. Fifty bucks, Travis. Fifty bucks. Yeah, look at this. Bucks. He's so got stuff up top too. Oh, look at all this. Australian. Yeah, this this uh, setup right here is a nerd's dream. <laughs> and this is Troy. And, and see, Troy doesn't care about parallels. He doesn't care about Could parallels because not give a damn. He's uh, from the Gold Coast in Australia. Yeah, he's like I'm swimming and screw parallels. What did you call this, uh, Steve? Briz Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. All right, so he's in Briz Vegas right now, and he's underwater. He's not thinking about parallels. Yeah, you don't want to run parallels <laughs> underwater. <laughs> no. So well, there you go. It. Good episode. Thanks for that. I am um, half sold. I think perhaps maybe when I buy my Mac, I'll get you to do, do the installation for me. Sure. <sighs> sure, why not? But yeah, no, it, it's, it's great. It allows you to uh, experience multiple operating systems mm. on a single machine. Mm. Like I said, if you have a Windows box, you're not going to be experiencing Macintosh on it, but... You can install or you know experience Linux. You can do all the old ones. You can, if you've got games, it'll only play in Windows 3.11, like that old Yahtzee game. That's kind of cool. You can do that if you really want. Old Yahtzee fans, there you go. We give us never say we don't serve you too. All right, that's it for for, for us. Another episode of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers, and we'll see you next time. Bye, Yahtzee. All right, so for a demonstration of Parallel's new coherence mode, we'll start up Vista.
It'll start up in its own separate window, as it normally does, and it'll take a while to boot, as it normally does. start up a bit choppy because it's really chugging as I'm screen capturing this. And you notice very shortly it will slide off to the side like so and now the Windows taskbar is here at the bottom. And I can run it. You'll notice the Apple menu is still up top here and my dock is still along the side. So I'm going to run Firefox at the same time. That's got Lab Rats up. And when this stops chugging, I'll be able to do the same here. Now when I minimize this one, it'll minimize to the taskbar. It'll ask me about phishing. So I'll minimize that to the taskbar. Get rid of that. And this one, it will minimize over to my usual space on the dock. And this one is right here. Now coherence mode is set up in the view mode over here. So you can set it up in OS window, that'll put it into a separate window by itself. You can run it full screen. This is uh, whichever virtual operating system you're running. I'm going to break it off into a window so you can see the two running side by side. So now we've got them separate and put them back into the usual mode. We'll just hit coherence, away it goes. And now we'll just shut it down from within coherence mode. And next time you start it up, it will start up in coherence mode again after you log in.